Hey there, everyone. I'm John Kimball. I'm uh, with Safe Food Alliance, and I thought I'd just kind of kick things off this morning. I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, Christy in a moment. And uh, as you can see, we've got a wide variety of folks here. Uh, if you haven't yet, you can go ahead still and continue to uh, share with everyone who you are and where you're from in the chat box. Uh, looks like we have a quite a wide variety this morning of different folks. It looks like a Biscuit Company, I saw kombucha, uh, I saw um, Hershey eggs, or just a wide variety of folks, and a few that are still just kind of interested. I saw, I think, a student in there as well, uh, pest control, and uh, folks from a couple of different companies, so that's great, uh, or a couple of different countries. So uh, always get a wide variety, and SQF is a, a global uh, food safety standard, so uh, they definitely do interact with folks from all over the world, and I'm sure that Christy will touch on that a bit when we get started here, uh, but I just wanted to uh, just briefly kind of leading in, talk about the fact that uh, for those of us in the food industry, expectations from our customers, as well as from regulatory bodies, really continue to evolve. And uh, we see risks within the supply chain emerge as well. Things change, we see new challenges, and there's a ever increasing complexity in the supply chain. Uh, today, there are products that you can buy at the grocery store that may have ingredients from uh, 10 or more different countries even in them uh, when you purchase those products. So. Uh, we've got to stay on top of things and stay ahead of the game in terms of managing risk for our company, um, both for the sake of our company as well as for our consumers, of course, which is the number one priority is to keep people safe. And uh, so it's, it's doing the right thing for our customers and for our company as well. So uh, I've found that one of the best ways, if not the best way, to, to do that to manage those risks, to stay ahead of the game and to minimize risk to your company uh, and try to have best practices in place is to implement a GFSI program like SQF. And having that system, that management process or program in place uh, really helps to your company to stay at the cutting edge and, and really manage those things. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up uh, Christy's bio here. Um, we always enjoy working with Christy. Uh, she's, she's great. Um, she's got a very fun bio here. So uh, Christy Gerzwinski, I always have trouble saying that uh, last name, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, Christy Gerzwinski has made a career of helping food companies create systems that ensure the safe production of food including 11 years working with the National Restaurant Association's Serve Safe program. So I'm sure some of you are familiar with that if you've ever worked in the restaurant industry. Uh, now as technical director for the Food Industry Association's uh, Safe, Food, Safe Quality Food or SQF Institute, Christy is responsible for supporting the delivery of a consistent globally recognized food safety and quality management program based in sound scientific principles, which is so important. Uh, that, we, that we make sure that things are based in sound science. She particularly shines at developing mind-blowing training programs and otherwise makes making complex topics approachable. I'm not wearing my glasses. I should have, Christy. <laughs> Christy enjoys binge eating jalapeno potato chips and tiny chocolate, but not necessarily at the same time. So uh, Christy, welcome. It's always great to work with you and looking forward to our presentation this morning. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, I do enjoy my jalapeno potato chips and I always have like right here off to the side some uh, <laughs> tiny chocolate with which to uh, sustain me. Um, so thank you so much. I really appreciate being here, being invited and so great to see all of you. I'm looking at uh, where you've all come from and where you are uh, what food sector categories that you're working in. We're like all across uh, the board here. This is fantastic. I, I can't wait to talk to all of you. Um, hopefully uh, we'll touch on why you're here. Um, if not, you'll know who to talk to moving forward if you have further questions when we finish up. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, there. Okay, there's Christy, me. Christy, um, if, if you don't mind, if I could just, oh yeah, and there's the, the lovely picture of Christy. Um, <laughs> I, I did forget to mention everyone, we really, really encourage you to jump in with your questions. Yes. Put them in the chat box, because we want this to be a dialogue, right? We don't want you to feel like you have to sit there for 45 minutes and listen to us talk. 
<laughs> yeah, so go ahead, Christy. Yes. No, perfect, perfect idea. Yeah, I have my chat box open so you'll see me looking down towards that, I wanna cover my entire slide. Um, so if you throw a question in there, uh, I will try to tackle it right away. And, um, you know, wherever it fits best into the presentation. So yeah, go ahead. You know, you do these webinars and 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 you think you know what you're, you, you know, people are gonna be asking about, but if, if we're not touching on what you need, then throw the, the question in the chat box there. I just say that because there's such a, a wide range of folks here on this call, so hopefully we're we're going to hit on everything you're expecting to hear about. Let's see, can I do that? Yep. Okay. So here's what we're going to talk about. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about SQFI, and I am a technical director at SQFI. I should give you a little bit of my background. So uh, my background is in microbiology, and I came to the food industry just by happenstance. Uh, I answered a job ad, right? And it happened to be for a company called Mary U Nutrisciences, and they do something similar to what uh, Safe Food Alliance does as well. So auditing, food testing, that sort of stuff. And I developed their training programs, and that's where I started in the food industry. Um, I love it. It's uh, like... Um, a background in microbiology, I had thought I'd work in a hospital or, or something like that, but um, food is, is where I started and food is where I stayed. So um, I've, I've worked on, mostly on developing training programs, but always as part of the technical team, um, you know, like with the ServeSafe program, writing the, the textbook and the training materials. And now with SQF, it's uh, working on the standard itself and developing the training program. So we're going to talk a little bit about the training programs, how to learn about the SQF code in a little bit. So we're going to talk a little bit about SQFI, about GFSI, and give you a little overview of what in the world this GFSI thing is. Uh, talk a little bit about the certification process, because I think that's, you know, getting started with SQF, you want to talk a little bit about the certification process. John's going to talk a bit about implementing the code, or maybe I am. And no, I'm going to talk about learning about the code. That's the training part. Okay. And then we're going to answer your questions that we hadn't gotten to later. Let me scroll down, making sure I see everybody's uh, comments. Okay. All right. Let's kick it off with, I'll get back to my notes here so I know don't miss anything. I thought that was a fun little picture. It represents various different foods. So thanks for sharing with uh, what foods you all work with. So what is SQFI? Let me give you a little bit of background about that in case you were kind of curious um, about uh, SQFI. Maybe you've heard of uh, BRC or IFS or uh, other GFSI benchmark standards, uh, or maybe this is something that your buyer has asked you to come to, to, to get this audit. So what is SQFI, you know? Is it just another audit? What does it cover? How's it different than, than maybe some of the other customer audits that you get? Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, the SQF program certifies uh, your food safety system for at your site for your product and your process. Uh, um, it's very specific to, oh, Croissant, it's in Danish, it's my favorite. I have a cup of tea right here that would go well with that. Thanks for sharing. Um, so your auditor is going to be looking at your food safety system, your entire food safety system to determine if it meets the requirements of the code. So those are very specific, but it's the auditor is also looking to be sure that you are managing that food safety system, right? You've got it verified that, that when they walk out of there, they have confidence that you have food safety well in hand. And that's achieved through the requirements that are in the code, the things that you have to implement. And it's probably not looking too much different from what you see from an FDA regulation or, a, you know, maybe a, a customer um, audit. But there are some differences to this. And the difference is um, within the process. And I'll talk about that in one second. Let me finish my other thought before I jump too far ahead. 
Um, so your food safety system is going to be made up of a lot of programs that all work together. And some of these you are likely to already have in place, like your sanitation system, your pest control system, allergen management, labeling, right? Uh, waste management, you know, making sure that you keep the site clean and that you're not attracting pests. So you can see how those kind of interact shipping, storage, personal hygiene, your hand washing. And then there's gonna be programs that validate and verify the programs uh, uh, so that you know that those programs are effective. So your HACCP plan, right? So you identify the hazards and then you monitor to be sure that those ha hazards are being uh, watched. So SQF is a HACCP based, it's a risk based program, which is really nice because um, it's just, you're just not, implementing things you're not putting in programs that that don't make sense for your site everything is risk based so you're looking to your product and your process and what's going to uh, manage that what's going to prevent food safety situations from happening so that a lot of that's your HACCP plan and then there's specific requirements around other programs so you'll have your complaint management system, a corrective and preventative action. So what do you do if something goes wrong, right? With your complaint management system or your pest control system, right? Your lab procedures, having a product specification. How do you know what you're going to uh, produce if you don't define it for what your customer wants? So you're gonna, you're gonna define what you're gonna produce and meet your customer specification. And lastly, you're going to make sure that all of your employees on your site know what they're doing. It's not just training. It's not just you know having them take a quiz or tell them what to do. It's verifying that they actually are doing what they're supposed to do. Um, so the training program is, is an important part and not just because I think so. Um, making sure that they all know what they do, what they're supposed to be doing and continually improving that process. So like I said, you probably have a lot of these programs already in place. Um, but where do these programs come from? Where do the requirements in this standard come from? How is this, again, any different than probably what you're doing for S, uh, F? FDA, USDA, or for your customer? Well, this is the part that makes it different. There's a lot of stuff running in the background behind an SQF audit that gives it integrity and gives it validity. And that is based on this, GFSI, the Global Food Safety Initiative. And this is the foundation of the SQF code and the process, the certification process that you go through to get an SQF certification. So the requirements from the SQF code come from two places, GFSI and from our stakeholders. Our stakeholders are people just like you. They're people like John. They're uh, folks like our auditors. Anybody who can weigh in and say, you know what, this is really important to food safety. Um, you know, something like washing their hands for 30 seconds, not 20, you know, so, so, you know, based on science and stakeholder input and these requirements that come from GFSI. So the group, the GFSI is a global group of food safety stakeholders. So you're looking at people like from the McDonald's, the QA people from the McDonald's and from the Costco's and from Walmart and uh, uh, let's see, regulatory agencies globally come together to come up with these requirements. And the reason behind this is so that this, this standard, so these food safety um, controls that you put into place are not just um, applicable to say California or Connecticut or Africa. Oh, we're in Africa. <laughs> I just saw somebody had said Africa. Uh, someone who is in Connecticut. Uh, we have Orlando, uh, Orland, California. Okay. Um, so, so that those requirements are just specific locally. What you implement is is applicable globally. Um, so, if you are shipping it out, or even if you're getting ingredients in from other areas of the planet, all these requirements um, are recognized globally by these global partners. So, so that's one of the benefits. GFSI also defines the process for certification, and I'll get it in, get into that in a couple of slides. But um, the reason that the audits are conducted by an auditor on behalf of a certification body, which is Safe Food Alliance, is part of this process. So it's not SQF 
writing the standard and having their auditors go out. It's independent processes and it adds validity to the process. And this is what makes it different and unique and a very uh, desirable approach by, by these large uh, stakeholders, the Wegmans, the Walmarts, the Whole Foods of the planet are, are the ones that want this program in place so that your program has this holistic approach. So hopefully uh, that helps. Oh, there is a question. Okay, so the question that was about Africa does, uh, where in Africa does SQF have certified body certification bodies so that certifications can be done for plants or farming in Nigeria. So uh, you'll see a lot of these certification bodies, including uh, Safe Food Alliance, operate globally. And that's part of this uh, aspect of GFSI so that they operate globally, just not in California where SFA is based, but all across the United States, into Canada, into Mexico, into Latin America and globally. I think you even operate in uh, Brazil, right? Even into South America, maybe, maybe not. Um, but, but so you'll see that uh, a lot of these certification bodies have auditors and representatives in countries around the world. So that's how that works. Uh, I hope that and, answers your question. Yeah, and Christy, oh. I went ahead and took the liberty of uh, finding on the website, you've got it uh, broken down like a global map. And so I went ahead and clicked on that region and then I put a link in there for them of uh, certification bodies that are, are stated on your website as providing service in that region. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, that's perfect. Yeah, then we have a little map, like John said, and you click on it, and, right. and you yeah. click on Africa, and and the like he said, the certification bodies that operate in Africa uh, will will show up, and you'll see that a lot of these certification bodies that are here in the United States operate globally. Same thing, you know, they may be based in Australia or Canada, but they operate globally. So so that's all part of this GFSI process. I haven't been watching my time, John, so you just give me the, you know, whenever I start talking too much. So let's go ahead and talk about the certification process. So how does your site become certified to SQF? So this is just a quick little um, graphic that kind of shows it. I'll talk a little through this. The SQF certification provides an independent and external validation um, that a product or process with international regulatory and other specified standards. Uh, so the SQF standards and enables food suppliers to give assurances that food has been produced, prepared, handled according to the highest possible standards. Those are those requirements that are built by GFSI and included in the SQF standard. So here's the steps. First, you're going to learn about the code, right? You're just going to look at that code. You're going to learn about it, understand the requirements that you have to implement. We ask you to register with SQF so that we know you're out there and that you have an intention. Um, you're going to make a, an arrangement with a, with a certification body and you already have this relationship with uh, SFA. You know, prepare for your audit. You're going to get all your documentation in place. You're going to contact uh, well, not John exactly, but their schedulers who will schedule your audit once you have all your um, programs in place, and then they'll conduct the audit, and then annually, each year, you will have another assessment of your of your programs, of your, your requirements, your, your programs that are in place. So this is a quick summary um, of the process. And Christy, we have a real quick question. How early prior to an audit is registering with SQF recommended? You know, as early as you want in the process. There's no, there's no timeline. It just lets us know that you're interested and we can, you know, we have great little newsletters that we send out. And then that, that just lets us know that you're ready and we can start helping you, start pointing you to your certification body if you haven't identified one. So really at any point in the process, you, you, can, you can register uh, with SQF. It's really just to let you know uh, let us know that you're interested in, and uh, so that we can begin helping you. Yeah, definitely. And I will say too, a lot of certification bodies may be a month and a half, two months out before they have any available dates. So it's definitely recommended, you know, that you start the process with SQF and the CV a couple months in advance from when you anticipate getting certified. 
Right, right. So, you know, it's going to take you a little bit of time to align your current uh, programs with what's required in the code. You'll do, uh, John will talk about doing a gap assessment and determining, you know, where, uh, where you uh, need to align your programs with SQF and uh, collect that documentation, ver verify, validate your programs. And so, so it'll take a couple of months uh, for this whole process to, to kind of operate. And, and like John said, these auditors are scheduled several months out in anticipation so that they can get on the schedule. So let me talk real quick about, we, we have different options. So, so this is kind of um, a pathway to certification and there's, there's different steps along the way. Um, if you're just ready to kind of dip your toe in this, you're not quite sure if you're ready to get a certification, there's a couple of options or if you, you already have a solid food safety program in place, maybe your next step is to go towards quality and implement a quality system that, that can be reviewed within your site. So quality is a big aspect of your program. So starting from the bottom and moving up, but you can kind of jump in here at any point. Uh, you know, we talk about the fundamentals program. This, um, I work a lot with very, very, very small suppliers. And I work, um, my brother actually runs a company that works with small businesses, getting them uh, funding and getting them resources. And he throws the food ones my way. Uh, these are uh, small programs that, you know, like an incubator or something like that, where it's just this one person and, and, a, and, a, and a stainless steel table, right? And so I work with them on the fundamentals program. And the fundamentals program is, is um, kind of like I said, dipping your toe into food safety, kind of if you don't have a lot of these programs in place, your pest control, your sanitation, you know, all these programs sound really big to you, maybe fundamentals is, is where you want to start. And we have two, two versions of it. Um, you know, just kind of easing into this, this food safety arena. Um, so, um, it really depends upon what your buyer is looking for. So if you have a buyer who says you need a GFSI benchmark certificate, um, then you'll want to jump into where it says SQFI food safety code. It says GFSI benchmark. If that's what your buyer is requiring, like a Whole Foods or, or a Wegmans or a Publix, uh, they might be requiring you to have this certif certification that's GFSI benchmark. But if they're not, they really just want to see you have some sort of food safety program in place. Like again, um, for some of these very small sites, uh, you're, you're just kind of selling in farmers markets right now, you might want to take a look at these fundamentals. And so it's just kind of getting you started thinking about all the programs that you need don't need that you need in place, but you don't have to have all the paperwork and all the validation and all the verification. You can kind of work your way towards that. So really, um, this is just to show how you might uh, start out and start uh, working your way up that that through that pathway. Let me talk a little bit more about that fundamentals program. This is what the codes look like. So that we have one for uh, on the farm uh, for produce and then one for anything sort of manufacturing, any sort of, um, you know, you have to do some, some cutting, some chopping, some blending, some mixing, That's, that would be your, your manufacturing. So let me talk real quick about that. So the focus is, emphasizes the principles and application of implementing a food safety system. It's designed to meet the GFSI Global Markets Program, and that's something kind of, again, easing your way into GFSI benchmark certification. There's two levels to get you started, like I said, and one builds into the next and then builds into that GFSI benchmark standard. And the cool part is, and I'll talk about this in a little bit later, there's a lot of cool tools to kind of help you on your way. And I'll talk about those in a little bit. So um, again, it's designed for those very small, medium uh, sites, food safety sites who are just kind of starting out with their food safety program. So you might want to look at that. 
One of the first steps you want to take is identify, we have something called food sector categories. It kind of defines your product and your process, right? So are you growing shrimp? Are you laying eggs? Are you um, uh, on a dairy farm? Are you making fluid uh, dairy? Is it dairy products? We had some eggs, I think, and some dairy. So this really just defines your product and your process. And this is the cool part about um, the standard is that the auditor that then is going to come into your plant is just not some random person. They have true industry experience in your area. And so they understand the food safety controls that you should have in place. And they understand when they're looking at your documentation, they have familiarity with this. They have uh, years of experience, not only auditing these sites, but working in those uh, in that food sector category as well. So you're not getting, uh, you're not, in a dairy plant, you're not getting um, a meat uh, auditor. You're getting a dairy auditor. And that's the cool part. So that's why we ask you to identify your food sector category. You're going to build your food safety team. You're going to uh, do some HACCP training and that sort of stuff. And then next, you're going to create your food safety program. And you're going to say what you do, and that's develop your, your policies and your procedures around the programs that are outlined in the SQF code. You're going to say what you do. Then you're going to do what you say, and that's implement it. What resources do you need? Um, how do you need, you know, where do you need to train your staff and your employees on your policies and your procedures? And then you're going to prove what you've done. You're going to make sure that what you've put into place is managing the hazard that you identify. So you verify, you validate that procedure. Is your sanitation program working? You know, is your pest control program working? All that sort of stuff. And then selecting your certification body can be at any point in this process. We just made sure that we included it there on the slide, but you're already working with Safe Food Alliance here. So you know uh, you have uh, a certification body ready. And then another nice way to look at uh, the audit process. So what's involved in the audit process. So again, you're going to um, you're going to implement that code. You're going to put those programs in place, or you're going to align what you have with the SQF code. Get your um, your staff trained and aware of what they're doing, how they're fulfilling their role. Talk, meeting with your certification body to set up your audit. Your audit. You're going to set up the audit and come in and do the assessment of your site against the code. Um, and it literally is is the code. So so what you see here in the in the code itself is what oh I went right to the cover. What you see here is exactly what the auditor brings into your site. There's nothing different. They have what you have. Um, and they're gonna say, do you have a program to manage foreign material? And they're gonna look to see what you have in place to manage for a material if that's a risk within your site. They're going to create a report around each and every one of those requirements in the code and you're going to see that how you um, do in, in, in your uh, implementation of that and that's within the report. And then, like I said before, each year you're going to recertify this process. You're going to go back and take wherever you might have had some sort of a uh, deviation or a gap and you're going to go back and implement that. You're going to figure out what happened. Why doesn't it align? Where did we not meet up? And you're going to fix that. And so continuous improvement is a, is, um, a very big part of the program. So you're continually improving your system, uh, not just every year, but literally every day. Anything you want to add to that, John, as far well, as the I, audit process? That's all totally true. Um, and, and, you know, the auditor, as an auditor, we come in and we kind of take a snapshot of what's going on uh, while we're there. It's basically a sampling exercise, just when you, as if you were sampling your product, right? And you send that sample to a lab, right, to check it, um, but you're not sampling every single package, right? So when we're there, we're, we're sampling as best we can while we're there. But every audit experience is a little different. Sometimes we'll show up and it happens to be the day that the, uh, the roof started leaking or something, right? And so we just <laughs> deal with that as it comes. 
but we, we do have a question. Um, so what would bakery mixes and flour fall under the food sector categories like muffins, pancakes, brownies, cookie mix, uh, things like that. And I, I suppose, I don't know if you want to address that, Christy, but uh, really you work with your certification body and they'll help you determine which category you fall under. And sometimes a company will fall under more than one category as well, right? Exactly, exactly. You probably know bakery quicker than I do, John. Bakery is... Oh, I don't have the numbers memorized offhand, but... Here's, oh, I kept wanting to say 14. No, it's 13. I was one off. 13. Bakery um, and snack food processing, anything uh, like that that is baked uh, would be 13. Mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, like say roasting nuts or processing um, fruit to go into fruit pies, then, then, you know, there's another process for that. Mm -hmm. um, another food sector category for that. And again, that's so that the audit that come, auditor that comes into your site has that expertise. So when they're reviewing your policies and procedures and what you're doing to ensure the safety of your bakery product that they know, um, you know, how, you know, how it should be and how it measures up against that. And that's so important because having that industry experience and that background, right, to understand what the risks truly are. Uh, you know, Christy, I've got a colleague, I don't think he'll mind me sharing that he came out of uh, fresh produce and retail products. And then he visited some of our clients that uh, are handling things straight from the field. They're coming in in wooden bins. Uh, you know, they've got maybe a piece of paper stapled on the side with the label as to what the product is. And he went, you can't have wood in food processing yes. environments. Yes. No, that, that's the nature of it. So, so it's understanding the risk because you don't want an auditor coming in yeah. and not understanding what you're doing. And so that's why it's so important to have those in place so that you get an auditor with the appropriate background. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Because when you said that with wood, my background's in meat. You don't want wood in a meat processing, but but that's just that's just what you do in, in, in proto. So when you said that, I'm like, ah, no, no wood. But yeah. you know what? You're exactly right. So there's requirements for managing foreign material, but how you do that's going to be different based on your food sector category. And again, like John said, that auditor is going to know. They're not going to be like me freaking out going, why do you have wood? You know, so uh, they're going to be like, okay, how do you manage that wood? How do you make exactly. sure that it's not getting in there? Yeah. All right, John, you're up next. All right, great. So implementing the SQF code, did you have something you wanted to say here first on that slide before I- No, it? no, you know what? You could have okay. taken that out. No, that's fine. I just put that in there so people could see what the codes look like. All right. So, so go ahead, here's your slide. Um, I suppose, I guess, yeah. So um, basically when Christy and I talked, uh, we, we thought that it'd be good for me to jump in just for a short portion uh, and talk about kind of from the side of working with customers. So we have a lot of uh, small to medium companies. Uh, I've worked with companies that have two or three employees even, and just kind of helping them to figure out how do we, uh, how do we get from zero to where we need to be, or how do we grow our company through the, you know, gaining these uh, certification processes and uh, implementing an SQF program. Uh, and, and it really is a management system as well as a certification process uh, for your customers to see that you're certified. It really benefits you quite a bit even without the recognition that your customer is looking for, the program itself is still beneficial. So um, Christy, do you, want, do you want to go ahead and switch to the next slide? Or I could just jump in either way. But um, Christy talked about the uh, SQF programs, right? The three levels. You've got the, the fundamentals, which is the basic, the intermediate, and then you've got your full GFSI certification. And then the fourth level on top of that is the optional quality audit. Uh, or quality module. Uh, and so this uh, slide here is one that I often share with clients or companies when I'm kind of helping them to understand. Uh, so the, the requirements from your customer, customer-driven food safety audits, I look at it as there being three different levels, uh, which kind of aligns with uh, the SQF program. So your basic site inspection or GMP audit uh, is primarily walking around the facility. It's the floors, walls, and ceilings. What are the people doing? Do you have chemicals under control? Um, hand washing, right? How does hand washing look? All of that. Um, and there are some documents that we look at with that. And so that would align with the SQF basic, uh, the, the basic uh, program. Uh, and so it's really great as a um, 
a stepwise process, right? So I would highly recommend that you, if you're starting from zero, uh, go ahead and get that basic audit or that GMP type audit first. And then from there, you kind of work your way on up and build on it. And the nice thing about the, the fundamentals programs with SQF is that all three levels really just, uh, they, they align with each other, right? I think the numbers are even the same, aren't they, Christy? And so if you look at the basic, it's just missing some segments, right? So then you move up to the HACCP level or the intermediate SQF level. And that's got some more requirements in place. And so that's got the HACCP plan and some of the other basic uh, fundamental programs that you need to have in place uh, for your food safety program. And then beyond that, the full GFSI audit is the one that's recognized. So if you're trying to get into a grocery store and they're not asking you just for a third party audit, but they specifically say, I want a GFSI audit from you. Or if you're trying to provide an ingredient to a food company and they're saying, I want your GFSI audit, this third level is what they're talking about, the full SQF program. Okay. And so that, that's kind of how it goes. A lot of companies that we've worked with have, have kind of followed this stair-step process in their audits and worked with their customers to say, here's my plan. I'm going to do a GMP audit next month. Uh, six months from now, I'm planning on having the HACCP. And then a year and a half from now or a year from now, I'm planning on having the SQF. So um, I've got a, a, a number of slides here. I guess I should keep moving. Do you want to bounce over to the next slide real quick here? Um, so this is very similar to what Christy presented. In my mind, the path to certification, very similar to what she already uh, put up on the slides there. But the first one is dedicating resources. Uh, and then you'll notice the green bar that says where we can help as a company, say Food Alliance. So uh, we can't help with the first one. You need to make sure you have people and you have management commitment in place. Uh, so sometimes companies find they need to hire an additional person. Right, where they find they need to purchase another piece of equipment or update something, right? Then you move on to training and training is so important because you've got to understand the requirements. And so often when companies have uh, trouble implementing it's because they haven't taken the SQF training. They haven't taken the HACCP training. They just don't really understand. Uh, and, and there's gotta be backup, right? So when we say training, we don't mean one person. We mean everybody needs to be on board. Uh, doing a gap assessment, which I'll talk about in the coming slides, uh, where we assess where the gaps are in the program. Then we implement, right? We, we close those gaps and then we go through the certification process. And this isn't really a completely linear process, right? We're gonna be doing training all the time. And we do gap assessments sometimes frequently. In fact, your internal audits, right? Are kind of a gap assessment too sometimes. So uh, we can go ahead and jump to the next slide. So on the SQF website, it's laid out really nicely. This is just a screenshot there um, uh, of their website and where you can find some of the documents uh, that are that are get, you're going to be using on a regular basis, right? So tip sheets, guidance, and checklists. So there is a checklist on there. So if you say, I want to do SQF, the GFSI uh, program, download that checklist from the checklist section there. And it's an Excel spreadsheet and you go through and you do a gap assessment or an audit with that checklist, just like I would as an auditor. So you can go ahead and jump to the next one there. And then this is a uh, screenshot of the checklist. As you can see, it's section 2.1 management commitment. So it's the very beginning of the checklist. But as you can see there, there's a primary response, which is, you know, are we compliant? Do we have a gap there? Uh, and then the evidence is where you would make your notes as to what you have or don't have. And then we can go to the next slide. And then you conduct your gap assessment. Again, I just kind of made this up, right? But as you can see, going through that, uh, that little uh, checklist, right, for product formulation and realization, uh, there's a couple of them that are compliant. And there's a couple items where we said, you know what? We have a minor gap here. We have something we need to implement or put into place to close the gap on this before we uh, make our first attempt at getting certified to SQF. Okay, so then the next slide. So then taking those gaps, right? And you can even just filter that uh, Excel spreadsheet if you know how to filter in Excel, you take their spreadsheet. Um, but what I did there was I added in the time estimated and the due date, because one of the things we really struggle with is how do I manage all these things that I need to get done, right? How do I get to SQF? I've got uh, 52 different things I've, set, I've decided that I need to do, right? So how in the world do I manage that? And so it is meeting with your team putting together a checklist and saying, here's who res who's responsible for this, right? So you can see there's a responsible category. Here are the details on what we've done. Here's the time that we're estimating it's going to take because management is going to come and say, okay, how long is this going to take, right? Can we have it next week, 
<laughs> Chris, I don't know if you've ever heard that, but yeah, you know, I, we, we get calls from people all the time say, how long does it take? Can I get it done by next month, right? And so uh, you look at it, you say, okay, well, it looks like it's going to take us a year unless we allocate some more resources, right? So this is really just good business practice here to kind of help manage up and communicate with top management about how long it's going to take. And then you can uh, hit the next slide. And so finally, um, I strongly, strongly recommend what we call a pre-assessment. This is an informal audit. This is where an auditor like myself or you know, somebody else from our certification body would come in, basically walk you through the audit itself, answer any questions you have, take a look at your programs, just like we would as in a formal audit. So it's a full review of compliance, right? Uh, and we would identify any gaps in your program um, and uh, basically share that list with you. So now you have your checklist from a third party auditor saying, here's what you really need to focus on still. So it's kind of like you do your own gap assessment internally, right? And you can get a consultant to help you with that, right? We consult, other companies do as well. There's a bunch of great uh, SQF professionals out there. Um, so you can contact us or, or any other group if you're already working with somebody else to say, hey, could I get some help with this? Or you know, when you're ready for the, for the uh, pre-assessment, then our certification body uh, would send that person in to do the pre-assessment. Now you'll notice on the slide, the second bullet point there, I, I mentioned it can be focused or specific. We have had a few cases where a company will contact us and say, look, I, I've been getting HACCP audits for five years now. I really want you to focus on the other elements of SQF, right? The other parts of module two, and I'm pretty comfortable with where my HACCP plan is. So I just want to have you come in for a day and work with me on the other. We can do something like that as well. We're more than happy to talk to you about whatever it is that you need uh, to go ahead and, and help you get there. Uh, so it's definitely something that we want to be there along the way. And we want to be there to answer any questions you have and uh, direct you to resources. Uh, and, and, you know, Christy, sometimes they just they don't know where to go on the FDA website or the SQF website to find something. Right. And so um, that's, that's so important to be able to just tell them, here's the page you need, or here's the document you need that's going to help you. So, and I believe, I think we had a couple of Q and A's there or no, it looks like we don't. Okay. I'm good. Uh, it was okay. A couple of comments on, uh, sectors or modules. So, so I think that covers my section. If you want to go ahead and jump in Christy. Oh, that was a great summary, really. You know, it seems yeah. intimidating at first, but John really walked you through what this is going to look like, you know, and, and, he, you know, what you're doing with your own site, looking at your own procedures and, and uh, is, is exact, you know, exactly that. And, and that's really what the auditor does. It's just an independent, uh, it's another set of eyes, you know, and, and, you know, you know, working, you know, you have your team, but it's so nice to have somebody else's perspective on it. You know, I, I think you learn so much from, from that process. So he really walked you through what that process is going to look like. And that checklist really is very helpful. And again, you know, I keep waving this, this is what the standard looks like, but that check like, checklist again is just the standard but it's in a nice checklist format and like he showed you can add you know your feedback you could add timelines you can add what resources do i need so you have a little plan right there when you when you use that checklist and you can use that as part of your internal audit and then you know that's part of what you're going to show the auditor you're like oh okay we looked at that program here's what we came up with to fix it, you know, isn't that enough? So, so th that process is just perfect. And having uh, the pre-assessment audit, very helpful, you know, again, before you go into this real certification audit where it's, you know, everything's on the line, have, have them come in, have Safe Food Alliance come in and, and check to be sure that you're ready to go. It's, it's really very reassuring. So that was fantastic. What a great tool. So I'm going to talk about uh, how to learn about the SQF code. And I said earlier that this is what I work on. Uh, I develop our training programs and it's something that I'm very passionate about helping people understand. Like I said, you know, taking this technical stuff and, and boiling it down to what do I need to do? So in a nutshell, these are some of the resources that we have, depending on where you jump into that little 
little, um, you know, stair steps, that pathway that I outlined, uh, we have different resources for you. So for fundamentals, and I'll talk about that on the next slide in a little bit more detail, but for fundamentals, we have instructor-led uh, training. If you like to go to a class, and right now a lot of it's being held virtually, but, uh, um, you know, it could be in a classroom, it could be held virtually like we're doing here. Um, or we have an online course uh, for the fundamentals program. We have, we work through our licensed training centers. So Safe Food Alliance is a licensed SQF training center. And so what that means is that um, they have trainers who are qualified. Again, these trainers have industry experience. They have training experience. You're not just getting somebody with a pack of slides telling you how to implement an SQF code. You have John's one of the trainers, you know, he knows what he's talking about in terms of SQF. And these training centers use the materials that we develop. So if you're using a training center that isn't licensed by SQFI, you know, you're just getting, you don't know what you're getting, you know? So, so that's the other benefit to using an organization like Safe Food Alliance. You have this training aspect, these, these folks who know what they're talking about. So you can find the training centers on our website and you can find find their classes on our website as well, as well as on the Safe Food Alliance website. So um, we have training for fundamentals. We have training for that certification, that GFSI benchmark certification that's called Implementing SQF System. And we have a quality systems course as well. And then we have an advanced SQF practitioner. And your practitioner is that person who is ultimately responsible or kind of spearheading your food SQF food safety program um, and quality program as well. So there's uh, some advanced training that uh, they could take as well. So here's all of our resource, resources generally. Like John said, we have uh, guidance documents, checklists, webinars, tip sheets. Uh, we have online courses. We're working on uh, a set of modular training courses where it's going to talk uh, topic specific about, you know, what do I need to do for my corrective and preventative action plan or my pest control plan or my uh, what's up with this uh, food safety culture? What do I need to implement? We'll have a guidance document and a tip sheet on that. And then very specifically, since we were talking today about fundamentals, this is a uh, we switched to just talking specifically about fundamentals. I don't know if you saw if it changed. Um, so we have, again, a specific course designed for fundamentals, and it's really nice, very hands-on, where it takes you through the steps, like how do you develop a specification? That's one of the first things that you should do, like I said, develop this specification. And you go through that in this fundamentals course and develop the specification. I think your approved supplier plan, what are you bringing in? How do you know that what you're bringing in is safe? Uh, so, so that your product is ultimately safe, all those ingredients and raw materials. Um, we have an online course for fundamentals, and then we have these wonderful tip sheets uh, that kind of walk you step by step through a lot of these uh, processes. You know, you'll see all these programs that you have to implement, and these tip sheets are very good at helping you kind of understand what you need to do to implement that, uh, that program. Is there anything you want to add to any of this, John, in terms of uh, training or your training in particular? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I think it's just a matter of finding a training center that, you know, you can kind of get to know, be comfortable with. And, you know, often companies will even work with a variety of different uh, organizations, right? So maybe they'll two or three different training centers. Uh, and there are a lot of different types of training they will offer, right? So, uh, and a lot of it is these SQF uh, courses are so important for SQF, but you also, you need to have HACCP first, right? Or it's recommended to have HACCP first, or maybe in conjunction with that around the same time. Uh, but also SQF, uh, one of the requirements is that you meet uh, regulatory requirements. So, I mean, right, no brainer, you've got to do what FDA says, it's the law, right? So, uh, getting PCQI training or whatever the relevant uh, regulatory training, produce safety, right? Whatever it is that applies to you also is part of that. Uh, on top of that, as a training center, we do a lot of custom training. I think some of the other ones do as well. So a company might you know, contact us and say, I'd like a two hour or a four hour virtual HACCP training for my team. 
to bring everybody up to speed, right? Or maybe there's a variety of different subjects we're gonna do training for them in little bits and pieces, two hours or four hours. Um, or, you know, also internal auditing is another requirement, right? So getting internal auditor training of some sort, if you're gonna be doing internal audits, which is required, uh, you should be trained on that, right? So that's just a, you know, a few examples, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good, good catch mentioning the HACCP training and the PCQI training, if that's applicable to your site. Yeah, and that's something that that John and his his training team can can also offer to you, which is which is very helpful. In addition to learning about the SPF code. Well, really, that's all that I had. My next Great. question, my next slide is about the questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and and tap them in. Uh, yeah, so it looks like Bonnie from Rowdy Mermaid has a question, and uh, okay. of course we welcome all of you. But do you want do you want me to read that to you, or do you want to? I check don't it? think I see it. Okay, um, maybe it only goes to me and not to the panelists. So uh, she says, "I have a question about the approved supplier program and C of A's received with ingredients. How do you assess the adequacy of the test done by a supplier reported on the C of A's in comparison to your internal receiving standards?" What a great question. Yeah, I'll let you answer that okay. one. <laughs> so um, a couple of things there. Number one, you've got to make sure that the result is coming from an appropriate uh, testing body, right? So if it's a laboratory uh, test, it's got to be a lab that is uh, certified or accredited, I guess, to ISO 17025. So that's very important. If it is a quality inspection and not a lab test, such as uh, defects, right, on a on a raw agricultural commodity or something like that, um, then it's just that it's got to be a reputable organization. So a lot of that's done by USDA. We actually have an arm of our organization uh, that's been around uh, since 1908, believe it or not. I don't know if you knew that, Christy, uh, doing commodity inspections on things like tree nuts and dried fruit. So we were around uh, way back then, even when the FDA was just getting started. Um, and uh, so that's another important thing, but let me make sure we answer the whole question here. So how do you assess the adequacy? Um, there are also a number of, uh, you know, uh, resources you can reference out there. Um, so like the, uh, the food chemical codex, if you handle a lot of different ingredients, right, uh, is a great resource. It's a big fat book they put together that tells you what the risks are for different commodities uh, or different uh, ingredients. Right, so that's another one. And there are some other ones out there. There's some websites out there that, that uh, you know, you can contact us too. If you have questions, I can refer you to some of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, you know, that's another reason why it's, it's, it's good. You have a resource like John and his team, they can tap into them and say, what is appropriate, you know, uh, as far as testing for, for the ingredients that you bring in, you know, if, if maybe you've not worked in this area. Uh, I, you know, like, again, I, I've always worked in meat and I'm sitting here thinking about things like milling and so I, like, I just, I wouldn't know, you know, yeah. so, so asking around, asking uh, colleagues or, you know, we have every year, that just reminds me every year, we have a, a conference where you can meet other um, SQF practitioners and QA professionals and you can tap into them. We do hold, hold some FSC roundtables and that'd be a perfect perfect uh, solution, perfect idea to ask them. So yeah, thanks for answering that question. Yeah, um, I think that's a great comment too, to definitely attend the SQF uh, event, the annual event, because um, that's a great way to, uh, as you said, get in contact with other practitioners, other trainers and things like that to really build that resource, uh, that, you know, I guess that address book of resources. Um, but also the, the training sessions are especially valuable. They have so many great sessions there that you can attend and and learn, uh, okay. and so so that's great. Um, now we've got a question here just to clarify: Are SQF and GFSI the same? Yeah, sorry if I confused you. I talked a lot about SQF. I uh, talked a lot about GFSI. Sorry if I confused you. No, they're not. Uh, but we work together. So so a lot of the requirements within our standard within the code come from GFSI. And then we as a scheme owner, as a, as a standard owner is benchmarked to uh, GFSI. So GFSI then sends someone to review our code against their requirements, right? So they're two separate organizations. We write a standard 
um, a food safety standard, quality standard, um, and GFSI provides a lot of the um, requirements that go into our, our uh, code, and they benchmark our code. So um, we follow their um, certification process. So, so we are benchmarked to GFSI. Hopefully that answers the question. And sorry, Christy, I shared my screen without mentioning that to you first, no, but I just wanted to make sure I share with everyone that we do have an SQF training coming up tomorrow, uh, as well as we've got another one coming up uh, June 22nd and 23rd. Uh, we've got a PCQI course coming up in July 13th through the 15th as well. Uh, and there are a lot of other great uh, training centers out there. Um, I know that you can, I'm just going to tab over. Uh, you can find, it says here in-person SQF training on the SQF website and over here events in-person training, but really that includes virtual, right? Even though they're virtual, they're, they're in-person, but they're virtual uh, because of COVID. And so, uh, you know, you can, you can find our events and other training centers events there. Uh, and as we said, it's kind of uh, map based. And then here is that certification body page, kind of the same idea, right? So you can search for certification bodies as well on there. That's so, a really but uh, yeah, good resource. Show them where the uh, checklists are. Yes, so resources center, right? So SQF guidance, tip sheets, and checklists. Perfect. And that's where you go to get those, folks. So here are the checklists, right? Different. Uh, see, as you can see, it's tailored to your part of the food industry. Mm -hmm. So, and we do have a question here. When you say your organization is licensed. Who provided the license? Right. SQFI. SQFI. So, so we create the materials that uh, Safe Food Alliance and all the other uh, training centers that are listed on that page use. So we created the materials about our standard, and then we license them to these training centers uh, to teach the course. Um, so, so again, we, we, we have this independent, um, arm so that, you know, we're not teaching to our code. Um, so, so there's no conflict of interest. You're getting this independent view of it, but using the materials that we've created. So it makes it official. Um, so they actually pay a license fee. Uh, to obtain these training materials. Um, and, and so if you're using somebody who just, you know, hung out a sign and said, hey, we do SQF training, make sure that they're a licensed training center um, because otherwise they're not using the training materials that SQFI created. You know, and I do want to mention, I forgot, uh, Christy, to mention, but we do have a number of uh, food laboratories that are ISO accredited. So, uh, you know, you can reach out to us with any further questions you have, like the one about C of A's, right? Uh, if you have, uh, if you're looking for somebody to do some pesticide or microanalysis or something for you, uh, we can do that for you as well. So definitely reach out to us uh, with any of those questions or needs that you have, because uh, we, uh, we have the laboratory side, we have the certification body, and also the training and the consulting side. Yeah. Uh, so we, we offer a variety of services, so... Yeah, and that's why we that's why this process is set up this way. This is why it was so that that all of these resources are available to you. And, and it's not just Safe Food Alliance. There's there's more that are available to you. And that's one of the ways that you go about choosing your certification body. Is this these resources available to you? Uh, you know, now you're a one stop shop for for laboratory, for training. There's even consulting. Um, and the certification itself. So, you know, looking at those resources, and I will say, I'd say Food Alliance does a very good job of this. Um, uh, so they're there and they're available to you. And that's one way that you can choose your, your partner in certification. Yeah, great. Well, Christy, I just want to say thank you very much. It's always a pleasure uh, to work with you. And uh, I think we had some really good questions and uh, hopefully everybody got uh, what they were looking for out of the webinar, but yet we're not going away, right? We're still here. So um, reach out anytime, contact us through the, you know, you can contact SQF through web, their website. Uh, you can visit our website, safefoodalliance.com uh, and uh, just contact either one of us. Uh, if you need any further information, we're, we're here to help and uh, happy to assist you. Yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity. Like John said, I hope that this is what you were looking for. Uh, if you have any questions, I think the easiest way to get a hold of me is info at 
sqfi.com then you don't have to figure out how to spell my last name info uh, at sqfi.com if you want to talk to me or if you shoot it to an email to john he'll make sure it comes over to me but thank you so much for your time i hope we we gave you what you need and and let us uh, know how we can further help you great thank you very much have a good one